What if you could generate a full 3D open world video game from a single prompt or just an image? Well, that's pretty much exactly what Google DeepMind has done with Genie 2. Today, we're gonna go over exactly what Genie 2 is, uh, how it works, and how long it will be before you're prompting Elder Scrolls, but in space and getting something that, well, hopefully is better than Starfield. So this is Genie 2 from Google DeepMind, which generates not only open world, third person games, but first person POVs and even driving games. Now, just to clear the air, as with many Google research projects, no, you cannot play this right now. If that bums you out, stay tuned because I do have a few other works in progress that will probably see the light of day. That said, looking at Genie 2 does provide a really good snapshot of where we are in terms of all of this technology. Uh, it was not that long ago that Genie 1 was released and it looked like this. They were very simple environments. The characters did tend to blob out quite a bit uh, and the quote unquote gameplay was limited to, uh, I believe two seconds. And a very important note was that Genie 1 was released in February of 2024. So we've come a very long way in a very short amount of time. So at its core, Genie 2 is a bit like the AI Doom project that you know we took a look at earlier this year. That is to say, it's not really a game engine, but rather a diffusion model that is generating images as you change perspectives. That's not to say that this is a carbon copy of the AI Doom project. Uh, this is rather iterating and building upon it, uh, you know, with some Google Flex. The big breakthrough with Genie 2 is that it is much more of a world model than, say, the AI Doom project was. In that baked in, it has a much larger generalization sense of the world, meaning that it can infer ideas about an environment and even understand concepts like, you know, jumping, walking, swimming, or smashing into a wall at 150 miles an hour. Boy, that took a real jump, didn't it? I think the world model idea is really exemplified in this example of like a boat racing game, or maybe it's like Grand Theft Auto Branson, Missouri. You can see here that all three instances begin in the same position and players ended up taking three different routes. Uh, we can clearly see that the model understands uh, th everything from speed to smashing into the sand. What's really impressive is in the sand example, uh, you get actual physical reactions from the sand as well. So again, the model understands what sand is. It can even generate whole new areas that it has not seen before. Uh, in this example, we have a fork in the road and we can find out you know, what happens on the path not taken. All three examples begin in the same position. Uh, the demo then takes us through three different alternate paths, one going to the left, one going to the right, and one turning around. Another important breakthrough is the fact that the model will remember things when they are no longer in view and you know they will appear in the same place when you return to that view. That was something that the Doom model did struggle with. So obviously it's very important for maintaining a consistent world. I mean, the video game of where did I leave my keys would be much more difficult if our world model kept forgetting where it put the keys. That's right, it's not me being forgetful, it's the world simulation that is out to get me. Now, of course, there are limitations. That said, we do have, like, I guess the Google add-on DLC pack coming in just a minute that really sets this apart from anything else that we've seen. But first, let's talk about the limitations. Now, the biggest is the fact that Genie can really only consistently generate for about one minute. After about a minute, we will tend to get like those typical AI video hallucinations that we all love so much. Uh, the morphiness, the smokiness, uh, randomly catching on fire from time to time. Uh, yeah, just, you know, all of the typical AI video problems. Something else that I've noticed is that the model does tend to get a bit soft in its output as the generation goes on. Uh, take, for example, this kind of like doom-like environment. It starts off pretty, relatively sharp, at least, uh, as we begin. But as you begin to play the video, you can see sort of the edges get a little bit blurrier and a little bit softer. Uh, this is something that we've definitely seen in AI video, especially when you take, say, one generation generation and then try to extend it by taking the last frame of that video generation and then beginning another generation with that. I'm not sure if that softness issue has more to do with the fact that that was likely an image to video game prompt. Uh, whereas if you are text prompting, you, you might not get that pronounced level of softness. Uh, for example, here where the Genie team was showing off that the model can handle complex 3D objects, we don't get that the pronounced level of softness. Everything looks fairly sharp. 
few other examples of the model understanding not only object permanence, but interactivity. Uh, we have some bursting balloons here. We have walking through a door. Quick shout out, by the way, if you've never played What Remains of Edith Finch, Walking Simulator, really great game. And blowing up an explosive barrel in the bad guy's hideout. Why haven't the bad guys learned to stop carrying around barrels of flammable material? Genie 2 is also capable of doing character animation across a variety of styles. Not necessarily overly impressed with the ladder climb there, but I mean, it's a ladder climb. Uh, most games don't do ladder climbs that well. But the real BFG of Genie 2 is the fact that you can generate NPCs. So this isn't just an endless solo walking simulator, yet you can populate it with other characters. That is actually handled through SEMA. So SEMA is another Google DeepMind project, and it's the scalable, instructable, multi-world agent. Now, I have covered SEMA in the past. This is essentially that AI agent that will uh, play video games for you, learn how to play them, learn how to beat them, and then do it better than you. But by combining SEMA and Genie 2, we now have essentially an AI NPC agent that can be directed to, you know, do whatever you want that NPC to do. And yes, in case you were wondering, you can have your SEMA AI agent then play your Genie 2 AI generated game. Now, I do appreciate the fact that the Google DeepMind team did provide some outtakes just with you know, AI bloopers, if you will, because it is AI. It's going to do weird stuff. Uh, for example, in this generation where like a ghost just walks onto screen and wanders off. If you've watched any of my other videos, you will definitely know that I am a huge fan of AI ghosts. Uh, here's another one that was supposed to be a snowboarding game, but apparently this guy is just like, I'm not drunk, you're drunk, and just decided to go parkour his way down the course. Uh, yeah, love it. And finally, a magic spell that ends up going awry. Um, one quick note, by the way, this is actually, all the images are generated in Google's ImageN3. So, uh, you know, to this magic caster's credit, uh, it does look like one, two, three, uh, kind of blobby there, but almost five fingers. So obviously all of this is not really ready for prime time just quite yet. And once again, it's Google DeepMind, so we may actually never see it from Google. But there have been other projects that are sort of simultaneously working on the same idea. Uh, for example, Tencent had their version of Game Gen O or Game Gen X, depending on when you ran across it, which promised more or less the same idea. Granted, both Game Gen O and Game Gen X kind of burst onto the scene with announcement trailers. There was never any code released, and then the videos were quietly taken down. So I'm not exactly sure what happened there. But there's also World Labs, which I looked at in the last video, which is similar in concept in that you could either prompt or generate an environment and kind of go exploring within it. But the technology is definitely coming along. And if you think about taking the SEMA model and then plugging that into Genie 2 and then adding in an LLM like ChatGPT or, well, I guess in this case it would be Gemini. At this point, you have an open world that you can populate with other characters. Granted, that world only lasts for about a minute, but still, as the old saying goes, this is the worst it'll ever be. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.